Hi, this is Chuck Oliver. I'm excited to welcome you to our educational webinar on retirement protection pillars. And I'm teaching you from my best-selling book, What to Do at 62. So whether you've reached the age of 62 or you've exceeded the age of 62, here's why this is uh, important and age is irrelevant. Many of us listening to this will be the first generation to have to self-insure and self-sustain our own retirement. In other words, an employer is not going to provide for the rest of our living years. And while Social Security used to be secure, it's very uncertain and a lot of those unique filing strategies to optimize our Social Security income payout benefits are also going to go away. So whether you've reached 62, you're approaching it or you've exceeded it, please listen up because many of us listening have at least 30 to 40 years to safely grow and protect our retirement income savings and I want to challenge you to rethink your thinking as it relates to a new retirement reality. So at the conclusion of this, I want you to leave with having the understanding of what retirement protection pillars are and this certainty and security that understanding how to optimize these retirement protection pillars will provide. Now, all progress begins with the truth. And the truth is retirement has changed for the boomer and generation X and Y generations. And if we stay trying to do what our parents and grandparents did, we're gonna be in for a very challenging awakening because those days are gone. Our parents or grandparents, likely those of us listening, had an employer provided pension payout with a more stable Social Security Administration and the ability to earn a more uh, steady or uh, certain retirement return on our savings, which the banks are paying nothing and the markets are more volatile our employers are not providing a pension that is being left up to us going from a defined benefit plan being the employer paid our benefit to defined contribution plan we only get out of it what we contribute to it with a very uncertain social security uh, benefit that some of these changes will have a dramatic effect on our long-term well-being for lifestyle and clearly the number one risk to people today is the risk of running out of money uh, secondly the risk of having to lower their lifestyle. I've met with several clients. I'm not just a best-selling author or educator. I'm someone who takes on a certain number of clients each month of each year. And I've, I've met with several people in their 70s having to work part-time, not by choice, but by uh, need and necessity. And I wanna teach you that a few small things that they could have elected to do differently, even just a few years ago, would have resulted in a very different outcome. And these are folks that are kicking themselves for not addressing this sooner. So. Kudos to you for addressing this today head on and educating yourself so you can take this knowledge and apply that knowledge which will become wisdom. Now, here's the reality. Many of you listening are in the boomer generation. Uh, the boomers are the first generation in modern history responsible for fully funding and self-insuring their own retirement. And here's the big question, two of them in particular. Are you prepared? Are you really, really prepared and number two, have you solved your income gap? Because I wanna address first and foremost Social Security income and then teach you how through a reverse model engineering formula, we can then find where the gap that will not be provided by Social Security income optim optimized payout benefits will come from to show you how to use the least amount of your savings to accomplish that by building and teaching you how to build your own personal protective pension plan and to have a safe retirement savings solution. Now. Here's how you're gonna get the most out of this educational experience. Teaching people now for over two decades, uh, it's so important that this is an education. So in under an hour, I wanna really empower you to do a couple things. Please give me and, and provided, uh, provide yourself with the full attention, right? You can hear and not listen. Please listen, not just hear. Please take notes. It, it's, not, um, it's not coincidental that by rewriting our notes in school that we test it better because by hearing, seeing, and writing, we'll retain about 60% more of what we're learning. And then thirdly, it's strongly encouraged that if you have a spouse or a significant other, please just ask them to attend. You know, this is not something that I would encourage you to study and then go back and try to teach them. And this will prevent, uh, I think, some discouragement or, or frustration of trying to remember everything that we covered versus having someone else teach your significant other or spouse as opposed to you trying to teach them. And that's from experience of people saying, boy, I wish I would have had them on. I wish they would have learned this. I wish I didn't have to try to teach them and remember everything you taught. 
uh, here's the, the all progress begins with the truth. You won't remember everything I'm teaching you today. This is, uh, as we say, repetition is the mother of all learning. And yet uh, two heads are always better than one. So please uh, do whatever you need to do to ask your spouse or significant other, or if you've got a, a parent or a, a, an adult child that's helping you in these decisions, have them attend with you. Uh, even if you have to call them and ask them uh, to register and log on, but in particular if they're in the same household. So um, during our educational webinar, uh, there's going to be a link that's going to become available to you probably about 15 minutes in that if you'd like to, and you know you want to request in a custom income analysis, um, you just need to be very thorough in filling out that link. Uh, I would encourage you to stick through uh, this entire educational uh, opportunity and then address that at the end. But if you're somebody who just knows that this is something that you're in a status that really needs to get this addressed, um, then please look for that link. Now, we're going to cover a lot of ground in a very short period of time. This will not feel like under an hour or probably feel like a half hour to you, but we're going to go very, very quickly. Um, the three things I want to help you learn that you need to do, that you must do to survive and thrive in retirement are the following. Optimize your Social Security income, optimize your retirement savings so it's secured, and build your own personal protected increasing income pension plan. Now. I want to get you thinking about your thinking. Very, very important. In fact, Einstein said it best. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Now, here's something to think about. You can't use the same mind that got you to where you are to be the same mindset to get you out of where you currently rest. So it's going to take a different thought leader, a different thought action, and I want to get you really thinking about your thinking in the rethinking of your retirement. Now, here's a great way to look at this. If you start uh, with this top diagram, uh, this is abundance thinking. This is the retirement freedom model. So very simply, the P on the left, at the top of this diagram, stands for past. The PR in the middle stands for present. And the F on the far right stands for future. So we today in our present have the ability to choose the future that we decide on. That's our freedom of choice. Now, in the future, as we're thinking about our thinking in the future, we can decide what from our past we want to utilize in our present to make our future brighter, bigger, better. And that's, that's the freedom cycle. Very few people think about their thinking and allow the freedom of want or choice to want to determine an improved outcome. Because look at where most people are. Most people are in what I call the retirement captivity cycle. This is why there's a crisis, folks, and this is why most people are not going to make it. And I know this, I meet with them every single month. And I can tell you, there's several people that just aren't gonna make it. Now, why? Why are they not gonna make it? Well. I tell you, I, I can't wait to teach you all the things you can do to optimize your money. But if you don't optimize your thinking, the money doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So the number one thing I can teach you is that in our present, many people feel that they need a bigger and brighter future. But no sooner than they determine that they want a bigger future, that they have to justify the choice of there being a need, which they look at their past. They look at their past and let either other people's opinions, um, the media, popular opinion, dictate their decided present. Instead of seeing the world for themselves, they let other people see it for them. So no sooner than they feel that they want, that they have to justify it as a need. As soon as they justify it as a need, they choose their past to dictate the decisions of their present. And it's like a dog chasing his or her tail. It's just this constant circle of nowhere. And this is why there's a retirement crisis, folks. That's why most people in and out of the market haven't made money, hear annuities are bad or good, or that life insurance is bad or good, or their investments are bad or good, and don't put their own particular circumstances to the test to compare performance, to compare uh, outcomes. They let other people's opinion or the media dictate those decisions. Please don't be held captive in your retirement break through and have the freedom cycle to, to choose to want so that you have abundance, not scarcity, because it truly is left up to you to choose. Now, here's how the game has changed. 
it's like a football game and there's two halves to the game as we well know and in the first half this is where it's changed in the first half if we draw a line kind of down the middle of the field the first half is where about 99 percent of all traditional advisors those that are trying to promote how to get to retirement not through how to get to retirement rest and that is hey maximize the money you put away pre-tax into your 401ks and IRAs defer that money out just as far as you possibly can until the government forces you to take that money out um, know that we'll call you and tell you when to buy and sell even though we've never beat the market indices like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones and realize that you only really need to live on just to get by 70 percent of what you made your last year of working and I would tell you that that's a, that's a, that's a flawed lack of process or system folks because here's the reality it's not about getting just to retirement it's about getting through retirement and this is where an authorized wealth architect somebody who's a retirement income specialist is going to address the following what's your tax exit strategy you know, I just recently met with a client who uh, will pay so much more in tax by following the crowd um, not in, in, in implementing an inflation impact plan in other words a lot of people I see with these types of annuities that as soon as you turn on the income the income remains stagnant so if it's a thousand bucks a month it'll be a thousand bucks a month this year it'll be a thousand bucks a month ten years from now fifteen years from now when only a thousand bucks a month really spends with the purchasing power of about half of that at five hundred bucks a month we want something that's going to provide a lifetime income increasing solution as well as the ability to have money left over that you didn't need to, to sustain your lifestyle or to avoid running out of money so you can leave money to the people you care about as opposed to the government being the greatest beneficiary of those decisions so if we're down three touchdowns at half folks to follow the same philosophy to get through retirement as you did going into retirement is not going to bode well and I want you to really rethink this so here's what we're going to cover in under an hour the top four threats to your retirement that's the acronym TIME if you want to write that down, T-I-M-E. The five greatest traps to retirement, which is an acronym TRAPS, I'll teach you what that stands for. And then I, I want to show you the brightness of day and breakthrough, the, the Boomer Retirement Breakthrough, four success core criteria in the acronym SAFE. So here we go. I'm going to also run you through a unique Social Security filing strategy that a couple lost almost 400,000, just over 300,000, just under 400,000 of payout benefits. And then I'm going to show you how we tie all this together in a very simple retirement income protection solution case study by one of our clients. So please, now's the time to take your notes and to be really focused so that I have your time and attention. Market data research reflects Social Security. Now, mind you, this is where I start with this pillar, right? We've all heard the three-legged stool. Uh, the stool's broken, folks, because Social Security is very different. Our parents or grandparents had a, a defined benefit pension payout that we have to create ourselves. And our parents and grandparents actually used to make a, a respectable yield uh, without having to risk all of their principal in the, the stock market because banks actually used to pay something. Well, here's the reality. Social Security for many of us may be the most valuable retirement asset potentially worth anywhere from four hundred thousand to over one million almost one million for the average couple in income benefits over the next twenty years in anywhere between one and two million over the next thirty years now i'll share that with you in the case study that we'll go through so please please hang with me now the top twenty five percent of retirees ages sixty five to sixty nine derive forty five percent of their income to support their retirement lifestyle from wages, wages, which means folks they're forced to keep working. So I don't understand the reality of calling them retirees. I guess since they may have left their primary employer, they're now working part time to get 45% of the income they need to sustain their retirement. And I'm telling you, if you take steps today, you can avoid being forced to work. You know, I have clients telling me, hey, look, I want to just travel. I didn't work this hard to have to go back to work. Folks, I want to teach you how to do that. 52% of couples and 74% of unmarried individuals or singles, maybe widows or divorcees, receive benefits uh, that are at least half at least half of their income is coming from Social Security. 52% of couples and almost three quarters of those who are single, right out of the Wall Street Journal. Um, think about that. At least half of their income from Social Security. Here's something to write down. Social Security benefits on average for an individual are about $1,300 a month. Uh, for married couples, they average approximately $2,100 a month. That's not a lot of money to get by, folks. 
if at least half of that is all of what's represented for your total income in retirement. That's why many are forced to go back to work. Social, Social Security benefits are insurance. They truly are, folks, against market downturns because the market or, or low bank yields aren't going to take away your Social Security, hyperinflation, and living longer than you anticipate. This is why I'm going to really challenge your thinking that don't trigger. Don't be like the 81% of folks today who trigger their Social Security at 62. You will lose hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that and pay in excess of likely 100000 or more of excess tax on your 401k or IRA accounts because of getting that order or sequence of how you how do you utilize those assets out of order versus getting them in order. By the numbers, uh, back in the 40s, believe it or not, there were 159 people paying in for every one Social Security recipient. By 2010, it was under three to one. And in about uh, a decade and a half, folks, it'll be very likely two to one, if not less than two to one, if we likely will hit another recession, which many people, even the great Warren Buffett, is predicting. So this is why we have to act on these filing strategies while they're still available because there'll be an overhaul to Social Security. So if you can still get grandfathered in and take advantage of some of these unique filing strategies, uh, it's, it's likely 100, 2, 3, 400,000 or more, depending on your customized design of added income payouts by just being aware of what likely you were not aware of before. Now, here's what uh, is going to be covered. So I want to go through these. It's time. Very simply, taxes are rising, inflation is increasing, markets are risky. We clearly know that. The government has stopped their quantitative easing and everyone's holding their breath to see what this is going to mean for the next correction. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then the economy is very uncertain. You know, we're a global economy. I teach this on Hidden Wealth Radio. Uh, it's very clear that just this the other day, Japan has now slid into a recession as of, as of their third uh, quarter uh, results. And it uh, really weighed our market down. Uh, Germany had bad export uh, figures of two, three months ago and caused our market to hiccup. Uh, things are very uncertain. ISIS, ISIL, Israel, uh, Ebola. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And so we have to really know that it is time. It is time to gain our own retirement peace of mind to guard against these core four threats to our retirement. Now, the traps are interesting. Taxes, we know they have to be heading higher. With the deficit we've dug ourselves into, clearly taxes have to go up. R in trap stands for risk of market losses. You know, what the last major market correction did it took 14 years to get back to even on an inflation adjusted basis, almost a decade and a half just to get back to even. And so we can't afford to risk some money to, to loss again. I want to teach you how to do that with upside opportunity but without downside loss, but without a cap on the upside. So you have unlimited upside. A, annual inflation impact. You know, Social Security just announced for 2015 the cost of living adjustment to be 1.7%. Folks, it's very clear that if you grocery shop, that the cost of, of goods have gone up in far in excess of 1.7%. So we have to make sure that our income keeps pace. Since Social Security will not, how do we provide our own personal pension income, increasing income solution, so that we don't have to lower our lifestyle? P, personal health setbacks. You know, nobody ever plans on getting sick, but when it happens, it can be a, a just a massive impact to our finances. And I want to teach you how to guard against that by using asset-based protection as opposed to traditional uh, protection, especially since long-term care can be very, very expensive, especially if you're just addressing that in your late 50s or uh, early to mid 60s. And then the S, the one that really has caused most of this crisis with why pension plans have gone away, while Social Security is, is, is petering out, Medicare is clearly broke, is people are living longer and longer and longer. And so kudos to medical advancement and treatment and, and health conscious uh, focused society. But sadly, it doesn't improve people's assets because the longer we live, the more exposure we have to something negative happening to our health. And the more <laughs> we have to protect our serious retirement savings so that we don't outlive our lifestyle or we don't outlive our money. So. And then here's the core four criteria that I want to teach you that I hope you have excitement about as we conclude today here, here as we go through this. And that is 
I want to teach you number one how to how to secure your your serious retirement savings that you need being the least amount of your savings from loss I want to teach you how you can have upside without downside regardless of what the media tells you or your neighbor who says that sounds too good to be true uh, suspend your disbelief be willing to think for yourself choose what you want to be your future not what people tell you from your past number two understand you need your money to be accessible so that if you did get sick you did get hurt you needed to help a child uh, you have a spouse that has a heart attack or a setback that you weren't expecting or you just have opportunity that you want to act on you have to have your money accessible you can't have it locked up or be locked out of it like in these IRAs and 401ks or these certain types of annuities number three I want to teach you how to be free from tax tax on the growth I don't want you to pay tax on the growth I definitely don't want you to have to be exposed to paying tax on the distribution and then lastly you surely don't want this money taxed before it goes to your spouse or your children your church or your charities and the last thing I want to teach you that it's really about easy management. It's the fact that you've worked this hard. D go be retired. Don't have to turn on uh, your brokerage account uh, online statement every day to see if you can afford airfare to visit your grandchildren or if the market hiccup that day or whether you can afford to do this or do that. That's no way to live. I'm currently working with clients that um, the husband wants me to help the wife from stopping having to trade three to four hours every day her entire adult life it almost becomes an addiction folks and those of you that know what I'm talking about either because you're that person or you are married to that person or your significant other is that person I gotta tell you no one's ever beat the market so let's just link our money to the market and let the market do what it's gonna do but remove all that volatility and teach you how to only have exposure when there's a gain not when there's a loss so that when there is a gain it becomes your new uh, principal so that you never have to worry about losing it again that's what I want to teach you today and that should put a smile on your face. So here's the challenge. Most people are gonna immediately uh, seek the opinion of others and, and, and I really want you to understand we can all see the same thing and see it very differently. You know, I teach CPAs and attorneys that may see what I'm teaching you today as one thing. Uh, I've even taught other advisors that may see it as something else. And I wanna teach you that somebody who specializes, like, like Archimedes uh, represented here, is seeing this as a lever to move the world. Not food, right? Uh, not firewood, but as a lever to move the world. Here's the reality. You can't get a second opinion from the person that gave you the first one, because they've already given you their first best opinion. And, and it's in their best interest, pardon the pun, to dissuade you from leaving the traditional way people in my industry are compensated by suggesting yeah that's too expensive yeah that's not gonna work uh, and it's a dead giveaway when they aren't aware of what they're not aware of with some of the questions they ask or some of the comments that they make and I've dealt with this now for over two decades the reality is you have to be willing to think for yourself and the decision not to make a decision is still having made a decision it was just the decision not to decide which is why most people are in that captivity cycle they can't get out of their own way because they're always listening to somebody else and if it's in the best interest of our industry because of being compensated, the more money you leave with those types of advisors, the more money they'll lose if you leave them. Uh, I want you to understand that's not the way that it should be. If something's in the best interest of you, whether that's with doing that with the specialty of interest, which we specialize in all of these different areas, we have specialists on our team, so we can do true holistic planning. If it's in someone's best interest to continue to do what they're doing or doing it with somebody else, that's the right type of advising to encourage you to do that but at the same time it's also fair to make sure that you assess what options you have in making that decision for yourself not being made for you so if you've got another advisor and maybe you're your own advisor this is where I really want to challenge you in the thinking about your thinking um, there are so many innovations and so many things that have changed that you'd be surprised especially if you put it to the test of comparing performance and comparing the most optimized outcome that I think you'd be in for, for a pretty positive awakening. So the traps, taxes, risk, inflation, setbacks, longevity. So the tax world. People are either in tax me now, tax me later, or tax me never. And here's the question, which do you prefer? Tax now, tax later, or tax never? Well, I think that's a pretty simple answer, but I'm not gonna have a tremendous amount of time to go into the depth and scope of what a retirement insurance contract is today, but I will brush uh, upon that with you as we go forward but the reality is most people are in that middle world tax me later with no say of what that tax rates going to be because you were told that you save tax by putting money into IRAs and 401ks 
But folks, you don't save tax, you defer tax, which means you also defer the tax calculation that you or I don't have a say over. The federal government dictates that percentage. And here's the real question to ask yourself. Do you think taxes are going up or do you think taxes are going down? And I think that's a pretty simple answer. And this guy knows the answer, right? Uncle Sam wants your retirement. And here's Social Security, the impact of the proof of that. When FDR, right, Roosevelt said, no, 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 no benefits will ever be taxed. They'll never be taxed. In 1981, Congress enacted a tax that up to 50% of your Social Security benefit is going to be taxed if you're single and make 32000 or more, or excuse me, jointly making 32000 or more, or filing single and making 25000 or more. Then it didn't take long in 1993 for Congress to realize how upside down they were because of people living longer and longer and longer, and Social Security, fewer people pulling the wagon, and more, more, more people obviously wanting to be pulled, that they raised the tax now up to 85% against your or my Social Security. So if you file jointly and make 44000 or more, or single 34000 or more, which doesn't take much to do that, folks, then up to 85% of your Social Security benefits being taxed. Um, in essence, the government giveth and the government taketh away. The money you paid in, they've now found a way to take it right back from you and I. And I want to teach you that it does not have to be that way. I want to teach you the two things that they can't tax that you can derive as income so that you can have little to no tax to your Social Security. So bear with me. Now, market data research says delaying Social Security doesn't just result in a bigger benefit, it can also make good tax sense. Now, here's why. Back in 2010, after the market just got hammered and it was proven that there were hidden fees in 401ks, which is another hidden wealth area that I'll share with you, you won't believe it. It's two to four times more in fees in, in these type of traditional 401k plans than what I'm going to teach you that the biggest banks and corporations use to safely protect and grow their own pension programs that you can utilize yourself. But they also, Time Magazine said it was time to retire the 401k. In fact, they defined it in this article as a rotten repository back at the end of 09. And um, clearly people have made li little to no money, not just based on the fees, but because of the tax impact and because of the market swings. Now, the risk world is very interesting too because most people only know one way to save their money and that's investing. And the 20 year average equity investor return has been about four and a quarter percent. In fact, from 1991 to 2001, the average investor return was under 4%. It was about 3.83%, where the average indexing return over that period of time, over the last 20 years, was 8.79%, which, by the way, that's tax-free if it's used properly in indexing that I'm going to teach you. Um, or if you were just tied to the S&P 500 from 91 to 2001, it averaged over 9.13%. So there's a difference when our money can participate only on the upside, not the downside, versus the ups and downs, ups and downs. A good way to um, demonstrate that is, as Buffett says, it's easier to lose money than it is to make it because we want, we want to never lose and always lock in any prior year's gains. Now, if you lose 25%, you have to make 33% to get back to even. If you lose 33%, which many people did in 08 and 09, you have to make 50% to get back to even. And unfortunately, a lot of people lost 50% that it then would require making 100% to get back to even. So it is mathematically proven, folks, it's easier to lose money than it is to make it. Now, the trap I think that's getting most of us is this annual inflation trap. And what is your LI? What is your lifestyle income number? So if you live on $6,000 a month today, then I want to challenge you on what's called the rule of 72. Whatever you think the rate is for, let's say, inflation, uh, divided into 72 tells you how often that number doubles. So if we think inflation truly, which inflation for you and I doesn't have the ability to exclude food and energy in the calculation as our government reported inflation number does, then if 6% divided into 72 equals 12 years, so true inflation, I think, 5 to 6%, it will then, in 12 years, require 12000 a month to have the same purchasing power to support our lifestyle as 6000 a month did 12 years ago. So we call this the silent thief. And think about your thinking here. Think about your first home, your first car, your first vacation. 
and now think about your last home, your last car, and your last vacation, especially if that was 30 years ago. For most people, that's a 10 times multiple. Maybe a $3,500 car was a, recently a $35,000 car, or a $35,000 home was then a $350,000 home. I think you get the picture. And here's the reality. The boomer and Generation X generations will be the first generations in modern history that will actually spend more years in retirement than the number of years spent working, which means we have to really work hard to protect our money, and we have to do things differently than our parents and our grandparents. The physical health trap, uh, shock that devastates couples in retirement, clearly unanticipated medical expenses, especially with Obamacare's rollout and the under, underestimating of health care costs, which I can tell you from client after client uh, is scared to death because several clients are seeing their monthly health care costs go from 500 a month to 1000 a month to soon to be $2,000 a month. In fact, many of theirs have already gone up to $1,500 a month before these, this Obamacare is fully enacted. It's hard to believe, but 78 million boomers will be 65 in about the next 10 years, which means there's even going to be a higher um, pull on an increase to health care and medical expense costs. 68% of those 65 or older will need assistance with daily living activities, and I would tell you very few people in their 60s have long-term care. In fact, one in seven will require in-home care, and many will prefer in-home care if they have that as a viable option. So, what can we do? Well, I think it's important to understand that serious longevity is what we have to guard against. And that's the probability. Look at these stats. These are as of the last couple of years, so these are only getting uh, worse or better depending on how you look at it. The probability that one spouse will live beyond 80 is 90%, 85, 75%, over 90, 50%, and 95, almost 25% which is hard to believe. I mean, it's really, really hard to believe. So what can we do? Well, <laughs> the serious longevity trap. Life at age 100 is surprisingly healthy, and please note the source. This is the New York Times back in 2001. And what's fascinating is that Sarah sitting here is 118 at this time. You know, over a dec almost a decade and a half ago, people were living to almost 120. Uh, her sister Kitty is 95. The grandson is 73, the great-granddaughter is 49, the great-great-great-granddaughter is 27, and then Bradley here, the great-great-great-great-grandson is three. So life is surprisingly healthy at 118. So folks, we have to do something about it. And here are the core four retirement success criteria. So help me really um, help you not just hear, but listen, okay? The core four, secure from losses, accessible when you need your money, free from taxation, and easy to manage. So when I did an article for Forbes and Yahoo uh, several years ago, uh, back in 2010, uh, the article was captured because of doing holistic planning. In other words, most people in our industry are either very one-sided to it being all about using insurance products and, or the other side that's all about only having your money in the market. We believe to have a true a holistic and protected diversified plan, you need to incorporate all sides of investing and savings vehicles. And so we believe you need to have 12 months of cash reserves in what I call there on the left hand side, the world of safety. In fact, the remainder uh, really needs to be in a safe yielding savings account. In fact, um, there's savings accounts that we use that are a form of savings vehicle that provide a six and a half percent yield regardless of what the bank uh, rates are doing or regardless of what the stock market's doing so that your money is very secure. But once we know that you have your cash reserves to protect your liquidity, then we, instead of jumping to Wall Street, would suggest to stay on Main Street and look at the world of security. How do you build your own personal protective pension plan and have protected retirement income accounts so that your money only participates with the upside without the downside? So in essence, you have the best of both worlds. You have the best of the world on the left because your principal is protected and you have the best of the world on the right because you have growth but you don't have a decline when the market corrects or crashes. And then once that minimum savings to accomplish your world of safety and the world of security has been anchored down, then we can provide with the specialty of where do you place your assets to be positioned for the lowest risk for the maximum growth so that you can outfox inflation. 
but while knowing that you have the world of protection that is, is able to, to protect the overall plan so that when one spouse passes that lost lesser of two social security or pension benefit that didn't have a survivor benefit can be replaced or if the uncertainty uh, of the need of long-term care kicks in or critical care or health care or even just the goal of leaving a legacy is protected throughout and that's what we mean by wealth creation and preservation it's the hidden wealth map of having maximum asset planning very very important now it's not all eggs in one basket folks but it's the right eggs in the right baskets first it's the place that you position and then the sequence of how you spend that's going to have the greatest impact on the efficiency of your money and your longevity so there's only two sources of income that escape taxing social security or paying federal income tax or state income tax for that matter one is Roth IRA income and two is special designed insurance now this isn't your grandma's insurance this is what every major bank and corporation use and every ultra wealthy person uses in order to make sure that they have the most efficient use of their money for safety liquidity rate of return and tax avoidance not 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 tax uh, not not tax exclusion from the standpoint of um, you know not following the tax laws per se and, and when will the IRS change these laws well the retirement insurance contract folks was designed through bank owned life insurance and corporate owned life insurance and understand that the government collects far more in consumption tax than they do federal income tax. In fact, um, when we looked at this, it's people getting grandfathered to make sure that they're protected if this is something that's viable for your solution. And the tax code provides these things in special designed insurance contracts. Now, this isn't whole life, this isn't a variable life, this is a very special indexing design that under section 101A allows the money to pass tax free under section 72e allows the money to accumulate tax deferred but under section 7702 allows you to access the money entirely tax free if it's designed correctly and there's a very few far in between percentage of population in our industry that understands this because it's a very sophisticated specialized area of planning but it's key if you want to create income that's not earned passive or portfolio income so it doesn't have any negative tax impact to you or to your social security now when we compare the hidden wealth cost comparison and looking at 30-year alternative savings using special design insurance note that a traditional mutual fund account over a uh, equal apple to apple comparison of time is an internal cost of almost six hundred thousand dollars in a managed account where you're actually paying somebody to try to outperform the market which no one ever has uh, when you add all the trading fees it's over three quarters of a million dollars and inside of a 401k if you can imagine it even though Dodd-Frank tried to get full disclosure of these fees they've still not been enacted that's almost a million dollars in a 401k over the same period where SDIC special design insurance contracts the internal cost is a total of two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a very small comparison in a very different design than when you think about life insurance and here's why there's two ends of the insurance spectrum and I want to challenge you one is what's the most we can get for the least we have to pay which is really death benefit right versus what's the least we have to take for the most that we can shelter and protect for living benefits now why is this important well when banks figured this out well before IRAs and 401ks notice that the top used saving strategy for banks and corporations are these special design insurance contracts. In fact, um, these banks have as much money in special design life insurance as they do in the ownership of their physical real estate, which is hard to believe. Wells Fargo, for example, on top there has over $19 billion in this strategy when all of their bank premises and fixed assets only total $8 billion. Very interesting. Now, why? do they use this well because of what we call the safe indexing solution and while that is important uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you if we have our money in something let's say hundred thousand dollars and the market goes up ten percent we now lock in a gain to make the gain our new principal but if the very next year the market loses ten percent we stay indexing is represented in the green where investing is represented in the red the market goes up ten down ten up ten down 10, up 10, down 10, up 10, down 10. 
then please understand that the average return in the performance of the red, average return, not average compounding return, average return actually can be uh, advertised as 10%. Now you tell me, if you start with 100,000 and you end up with $95,099, is that an average return of 10%? No, that's an actual return of a negative 4.9% versus protecting with lock-in and reset of the safe indexing solution in designing our own personal protective pension plan so we have 61% more of a gain, which translates into having 69% more money without taking the risk. 100% less risk with 69% more protected. In comparison, before you ask, how has the last decade, roughly and a half, uh, been represented? Well, uh, indexing in the blue represents about 1.4 million in one of our strategies. And remind, I wanna remind you that's tax-free versus 788,000, just, just shy of being half of the value that's very likely in a tax deferred, meaning it's really not 788, you've gotta take about a third of that off the top because it goes to Uncle Sam. So it's over two times the result taking 100% less risk. This is why I challenge you to compare performance. Now, people spend more time planning a vacation, the Wall Street Journal reports, than planning the 20 or 30 years or more of the Social Security benefits that they'll receive. So let's look at this, this first pillar of protection being Social Security income optimization. And again, whether you're able to draw yet or you maybe one spouse has already started to draw and you're trying to determine what to do with the other spouse, this is, this is key information. So strategies to maximize benefits. First of all, when can I file for benefits? Well, it depends on what year you were born. And for most of us, the minimum age is going to be 62 and the maximum age is 70. But for those of us born between 37 or, or between 37 or later, it's going to be 65 to 67. And you'll see this on the chart. You know, if you're born in 41, it's 65 and eight months. If you're born after 1943, it's 66 and, and depending on what year in so many other months. This is why it's key to get a a specialized optimization report analysis so you know the best strategy. But full retirement age is, is, can be found at ssa.gov. So I'll, I'll give you some instructions on that in a moment. Now, can I work and collect benefits? If you begin collecting benefits before your FRA, full retirement age, the amount of earned income you can make without penalty, penalty is significantly reduced. So notice, as of 2014, the first 15480 is exempt if you're still working and earning an income and drawing Social Security from 62 to 65. So any money over 15480 will be $1 in reduction for every $2 of income that exceeds that number that's exempt, right? If during your full retirement age of 66, in the year that you turn that, uh, you can only earn up to 41400 and then there's a earnings test that will re have a $1 reduction for every $3 of income that exceeds the 41.4 number. So let's see what that looks like. Let's say in this earnings test example that somebody earned 50,000, but their exempt amount was 15,480 like in 2014. That means their penalty is 34,520. So if it's a dollar for reduction for every $2 of income that exceeds the, the earnings test threshold, Notice that the Social Security pension is half of the 34520 which means this person has to pay back Social Security $17,260. So really rethink that decision, folks, which is why you've got to work with a specialist before you elect these options to avoid these type of penalties. Will my benefits be taxable? Well, we talked about this a little earlier, and the answer is it depends. Um, if you're filing single, if you're filing jointly, there's thresholds that you can make up to without Social Security being taxed. But notice it's different whether you're filing individually or filing jointly, and there's different thresholds. But let's, let's look at it as up to 85% of your Social Security can be taxable unless you've got strategies or the understanding of how to maneuver around that. Here's a big one. The tax me later world, the required minimum distributions. See, qualified plans are going to require when you turn 70 and a half to force a withdrawal factor, 
right? So notice the forced withdrawal factor at 70.5 is 3.64%. Then at 75, it jumps up to 4.36. Then at 80, 5.34. And then at 85, 6 and 3 quarters percent. This is universal, folks. No one can escape this unless you know how to maneuver around it. Now, here's the thing. If you don't take this withdrawal, which, by the way, is going to, and for many people, push them into having at least 50 to 85% of their Social Security taxed, there is an IRS penalty of 50% of the required minimum distribution. So let's look at what that looks like. Let's say uh, somebody has 500000 that's grown in their IRA or former employer 401k, and at age 80, that factor is 5.34% times 500,000 means that it's a 26,700 required minimum distribution amount, RMD. And if no RMD is taken, the penalty would be 50% of the RMD of the 26,700 or translated to a penalty to the government that you owe of 13,350. But you still owe the tax on the full 26.7, on top of also owing the penalty. And I see people that inher have inherited money from a late spouse's former 401k or IRA, and didn't know what they didn't know. And there, there's no mulligan here. There's no point of return. If you miss that by the end of, of the year, by 12:31, the penalty is huge. It's it, and it's not worth paying. So it's key to avoid this penalty. And you can avoid it by understanding how to get your money tax-free because the two things that escape taxing your Social Security also escape a required minimum distribution, which is why that's key. Now, the longer I wait equals more benefits? The answer is yes. So full retirement age, FRA, is the acronym to keep in mind that if your full benefit at FRA is 2000 a month, being 24000 a year, if you elect to take that at 62, it's a 75% actuarial reduction, which means your income drops from 24 starting out a year to 18,000 a year. And if you deferred or you delayed till 70, the benefit jumps up to 2640 a month or 31,680 a year. So I'll ask you, do, do any of you that are being educated by me at this moment have an account that guarantees you making 8% on your savings? And if you do, I'd like to read your books. But the reality is we know that that's a rhetorical question. No, we don't. This one does. And that one has not changed and is not in the foreseeable future of changing. So this is why reorganizing how we distribute money from our savings can be far less taxing and last us far longer by knowing the proper formula to customize it to our own needs. Now, here's some strategies for singles. Now. Please understand there's unique planning strategies available for singles and for couples. And I want to touch on one just very quickly, which is a file and suspend for somebody who's single. So whether you're a widowed or, or, or you're divorced, uh, also keep in mind that there's some things you can elect to do if you're widowed at 62 by taking a spousal benefit. Um, that's one. And number two is let's say you're somebody who's single and, and you just know in your mind that you're going to defer out till age 70 to get your maximum Social Security benefit. Please don't just delay that decision because if you got sick and you needed to elect triggering your Social Security before you hit 70, the way the Social Security guidelines are today, you can go back six months which isn't bad, but you can go back six months and that six months of, of back Social Security uh, benefits will help offset your health care setback unless you file and suspend. So filing at full retirement age but suspending your benefits still allows you to earn the 8% credits towards then taking your Social Security at 70. But if you got sick, let's say at age 69, instead of only being able to go back six months, you can go all the way back three years for Social Security back payout benefits that will help you offset whatever uh, health ailment that, that you're trying to get through. So just a little caveat there is it helps singles. This is why whether you're single or married, you really want to see the most customized, optimized strategies for your own particular needs. As it relates to strategies for couples, uh, unique planning strategies, th these are only available to couples, but I think very, very important are, are what we call switching strategies. 
So for example, Tom files at 66 and can suspend his benefits and therefore he'll earn the 8% year benefit increase which is 132% of his full retirement age benefit that he can now switch to at age 70. But Nancy, his wife, files a restricted application for Social Security benefits and receives 50% of a spousal benefit of Tom's between the ages of 66 and 70, right? And COLA, cost of living adjustment. So it's not just 1,000 a month for the next four years, it's 1,000 a month plus the cost of living increases, which even though those are probably gonna only average 2% or less, that is still an increase. But then Nancy can switch to her own benefit at 70 as well and receive 132% of her full retirement age benefit key, key, key planning strategies depending on the age of both spouses and the needs and the, the, the goals that you're trying to accomplish. The simple, the simple example of these switching strategies, if we look at, you know, assuming a 2% cost of living adjustment, and at this particular client's case, Tom is 66 and, and, and Nancy's only 64, you'll see that Tom uh, obviously suspends his benefit uh, he's full retirement age at 66, so he can basically suspend that benefit till he's 70 and then switch, uh, turn on his Social Security, I should say, at 70. But Nancy files a restricted application once she eventually turns 66, which would put Tom at 68, as you'll see in the depiction of the matrix there. And so she can elect 50% of what he, his full retirement age benefit would have been of 2,000. She receives then 1,000 a month or 12,000 a year. And then the 2% cost of living increase and then eventually she switches to her own full ret uh, retirement benefit, but at, se at the 70 age election, and now hers bumps up from where it started at 12, being a spousal benefit of Tom's, to her own benefit of 16.8, and then of course Tom is now has his benefit that's almost to 35,000. So uh, this translates into a lot more money, folks. And, and the reality is, nine different years, nine different strategies, 81 unique combinations. Um, this is why personal customized planning is key because it's going to be different for different people and you'll see this in our case study as we conclude. Here's an example because everyone's plan is different. Here's an example I'm taking you into as we, as we wrap up that will teach you um, why, why it's important to get the most you can. It's also important to live out your life the best you can and every plan is going to be different. So here's, here's a client case study on how to use our Social Security planning report to maximize benefits and personal choice. This is a client of ours, Joe and Deborah. Now Joe's 63 and his Social Security income benefit when he becomes 66 is $2,175. His life expectancy, and again, we really try to underplay this because I clearly believe as I've already taught you, serious longevity is gonna put people living well beyond 85. There's a high probability that Joe's going to live to 90 or 95, even possibly 100. But this is, think of it as the worst amount of income they're going to be able to derive because the longer we live, the more income we'll, we'll derive. Now, Deborah is only 61 as we analyze their design, and her Social Security benefit at her full retirement age is $1,145. And women actuarially, uh, through studies, are proven to live longer than men with a life expectancy that we conservatively use of 91. Now, here's, here's what they live on, and this is why this is key. This is why I really challenge people. You, you've got to get serious in rethinking your retirement about knowing what you live on. All progress begins with the truth, so analyze that. We have a very simple uh, income need analysis tool that we, we teach people how to use, very simple spreadsheet, and these clients derived that their uh, very conservative monthly income need was $5,400. Now, they have oodles of options, right? So if they file immediately with no special strategies, believe it or not, their lifetime benefits, even only going out to age 85 and 91, is over $1.2 million. And very few people will have the assets that can generate over a million dollars of income. That's why Social Security has to be one of the, the key three that we, we look at optimizing first because the order and the choice that we make there has everything to do with what amount of savings we need to anchor down our own personal pension and protected savings solutions. 
What are the options? Well, their best strategy is that Joe would suspend and Deborah files restricted, therefore their total benefit payout based on conservative cost of living adjustments and conservative life expectancy is in excess of $1,656,000. Obviously in this particular case, 450,000 more than filing early. Now, what's interesting is our report looks like this. The best strategy by age, uh, we, we look at um, a couple different scenarios, two or three different key payout optimized uh, solutions. And we, we, we gear that towards customizing it based on what you see as your uh, chosen life expectancy for both husband or wife or if you're single, and then what cost of living adjustment. And the key is we need your full retirement age benefit, which again, I'll teach you how to get that at ssa.gov. But as long as we have that, this is a report that we can run for you as we do our other clients, not only to see how to optimize your social security benefits, but to see where your retirement income gap is going to be. Because in this particular case, after all that analysis, Joe and Deborah decided a recommended strategy where Joe restricted and Deborah filed. And even though they didn't get the 1.6, they got just under 1.6 because it enabled them to travel sooner than what they had expected, visit their grandchildren, do the things that they really worked so hard to be in a position to do. And that's what is key. Doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it is a true retirement freedom cycle. So in this particular case, again, this is what the customized, uh, optimized uh, income from Social Security Maximized Benefit Report looks like. Um, in this particular case, as we take a closer look, uh, an additional $386,000 or 32% more income, almost a third more income by getting this protected retirement pillar in place and positioned properly. And when we take a look at that, we looked at an income summary, which is part of our report. How much will Social Security income pay out? And then that helps us, if you notice in the red, where we can identify your retirement income gap and then show you the steps necessary to use the least amount of savings with the most optimized tools to close that gap. So kind of before income planning, you'll notice in the blue is what Social Security optimized uh, payout benefits will provide, and the red is where there's going to be a shortfall. And then after planning is where we were able to make up for those shortfalls and even provide a surplus through, through looking at it with alternative retirement planning solutions. Now to find your benefit, and this is key as we finish, ssa.gov. You've got to create an account, right? Uh, which they'll research your earnings. They've all been reported there. You can view your benefits and you can even print a sample statement. And all we need is your full retirement age benefit. For many of you, that's either 65 or 66 or somewhere uh, in those ages plus months. But it's your FRA full retirement age. Now, don't get locked out. Uh, some of our clients have gotten locked out because they're going to ask prior history questions about if you financed a car through Ford Motor Credit or what have you. And I think they give you three three tries before they lock you out. So go into that with, with uh, not just blowing it off. Make sure you're, you're obviously very focused to get that because it all starts with ssa.gov and being able to create your account, which again, www.ssa.gov forward slash my account. You can get there by just going to ssa.gov um, and we'll give you some instruction on if you need help uh, in just a moment. Now the case study to tie all this together as we finish is as follows. Uh, very, very key that you understand that retire re protected retirement income with required minimum distribution tax reduction and or elimination is key because most people have saved their retirement savings in accounts of what I call tax me later or tax deferred. And Uncle Sam is the first beneficiary that we want to get out, out of the way. We want to get the government out of our retirement and get Uncle Sam out of our retirement. So here's what we do. Number one, we want to provide a rollover. So there's no tax when you roll over or do what's called a trustee to trustee transfer two different ways of doing it and be very careful because the, the tax laws have officially changed. There's some limitations on how many times you can do a roll over. There's no limit on how many times you can do a trustee to trustee transfer. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to go into that with you, but we could look at that in your own individualized situation. But if this particular client rolled over their former 401k, which was an IRA, and we put it into a protected income value 
uh, pension payout. So that, number one, the return, notice I, I circled 5.22. So that year, this only participates when there's a gain. It doesn't participate when there's a loss. That year, the index uh, represented a 5.22% gain. But notice the protected income value return credit was 50% more. So our income got credited 7.83%. Then in this particular client's case, we used this money to come out to supplement either their income or to build a second plan, which I'll show you in a moment. And then notice on the right, the lifetime income withdrawals started out at 33,903. And then this was during 2000, 2001, 2002 when the market lost, which these zeros represent how none of our prior years gains. The, the 20s, the 17s, the 28s didn't get given, they were not given back but we also didn't gain here. So the income remained stagnant. But then look, when the index earned, the income went up. This is how we protect our purchasing power to improve our purchasing power when the cost of living is going to require more for us to sustain our lifestyle. And even if we ran the account to zero, not only is the protected pension income uh, vehicle required to pay us the same income, but an increased income when the index also increases and it's only showing stopping at 91 because of the life expectancy I shared with you from our case study. This would run out even if somebody lived to be 120. But the income, as you can see, starting at roughly 34 and getting to over 72, more than doubles because the cost of living, folks, is going to double. And we want to protect that. But notice this 30,000 on the left that we started taking out after the first year. We were taking that out so we could drive down the account value, the accumulation value. We're intentionally drawing it down because that's the account value number that the required minimum distribution, in other words, the government forced taxation on our retirement after we retire. We want to get it down to where we don't have any RMDs, required minimum distributions, and ultimately get this income into a Roth status, which there's very unique ways to do that. But I want to show you what we did with this 30,000. At the same time we were using this rollover, we were using a rollout, and we were using that special designed insurance contract that I was teaching you that every major bank and corporation and ultra wealthy families in this country have utilized for years, 70, 80 years now of really being maximized. And that 30,000 was funding this particular savings vehicle so that also we could turn on not just the income from the prior example, but now a tax-free lifetime income that's also increasing our purchasing power, not eroding our purchasing power, to where that income more than doubles through age 91 and would go even further if we let it. But here's the good news. If, gosh forbid, something happened to this client, there is a tax-free death benefit that would also transfer to our surviving spouse or our children, our church, or our charities entirely tax-free. Tax-free income, tax-free transfer, and tremendous amount of liquidity that we could use to convert to a Roth, we could use to supplement our travel, we could use it for whatever choice to acquire real estate. It's entirely up to you, but many people use it as a income supplementation uh, source. So, there's two rules to the rules of 72. Uh, fascinating. The second rule of 72 says this, whatever we've learned that we don't apply to learn more about is gone within 72 hours. And I don't want that to be you. In fact, we've had studies that have found every 30 days that there's a delay cost the average person's net worth to be a loss of $50,000. So $50,000 a month or $600,000 a year, uh, procrastination is very, very expensive. So we have a process. One is to help you discover and uncover the different areas of your hidden wealth. Then it's to create a, a creation of wealth and preservation formula that's customized to you that is easily understood in a wealth building blueprint so that you can see for yourself the most optimal way to secure and protect and provide income so that you don't just sustain, but you thrive, not survive with your lifestyle and your income. And then to make sure that it's reviewed and can you continue to build upon what has been done to improve each and every year. Now, that being said, there's a, a please complete the link that you'll see uh, that, that's on this particular page uh, on the webinar that you're viewing. Um, that way you can have a 
custom income analysis completed. Now, if you have trouble, you can just simply email help at what to do at 62.com. Help at what to do at 62.com. And a reminder, we need your FRA number, your full retirement age number at that ssa.gov site, right? And here's what's key. We can only help people on a first come first serve basis. And 10,000 people a day are turning 62. Uh, the fastest growing segment of our population are turning 62 every single day. That's why I named the book What to Do at 62. This isn't just today, this is for the next 18 years. So if you would, and you're sincere, and, you, and there's no cost or obligation to have that discovery analysis completed, please complete the best day and time so we can avoid missing you. Because unfortunately, we don't have the ability to just follow up, follow up, follow up. And note that all times are based on Eastern time. And some of our clients are on, on, on Pacific time or Mountain time or Central time. So please know that each time represented is reflected as Eastern time so you can do your own calculation of what that means for the best time to reach you on your time zone. And again, if you have trouble, just simply email help at what to do at 62.com. Friendly reminder, ssa.gov so we have your full retirement age uh, number to start your, your uh, retirement income gap calculation. And let me leave you with this. Your most important planning decision isn't your last one. It's your next one. And I would challenge you, please don't follow the crowd. The easy thing to do is to base your future, brighter future on the media or what somebody else has you think as opposed to you thinking for yourself to break through that freedom retirement uh, that is, is only unfortunately reserved for those who can think for themselves. Thank you for your time and attention and here's to your hidden wealth.